Pacific Telephone present Helen Parrish on It's a Good Idea. Miss Parrish's guest tonight, America's leading dance team, Marge and Gower Champion. Hello, I'm Helen Parrish, and I was just trying to create a little dance routine here in honor of our guest tonight, because besides being the most presentable and talented dancing team in America, they are also noted choreographers. And tonight they have some very good ideas for us on how a dance is created. And now the most exciting dance team since Vernon and Irene Castle, Marge and Gower Champion. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Helen. Won't you sit Hello. down? Thank you. Well, perch. <laughs> good. Huh? Okay, I'm a little disappointed, Gower. After seeing you in movies and on television, I sort of thought you'd come in leaping over the piano. Well, let's go out and come in again. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to do it this time. <laughs> but I want to know, before we ask you some questions and put you to work asking about choreography, may I ask you a few questions? Well, I'd love mm -hmm. to. All right. I think we'd all like to know um, how long you two have been partners. Professionally or uh, in private life? Well, both, if we may. Well, we've been married about five and a half years, but we've been dancing together a little over six years. Well, then, if you started as a team before you were married, you weren't Mr. and Mrs. Champion, what was your professional name? We were known as Gower and Bell. I can't imagine which one was Gower and which one was Bell. I was George. <laughs> 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 no, but you knew each other long before you started dancing professionally together. Oh, my, you? yes. We knew each other way back in junior high school here in Los Angeles. Bancroft Junior High. Mm -hmm. I went there, too, same time. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then uh, Gower started taking dancing lessons at my father's studio. Oh, Ernest Belcher, a very famous dancing teacher here in Hollywood. Yes, I is. figured it'd be a very good idea to make eyes at the dancing teacher's daughter. Free lessons, you know. Didn't work? Nothing. <laughs> oh, what a shame. <laughs> but, you know, I think it paid off for you. After all, Hollywood starred him, and a very happy marriage, I think, is wonderful. Uh. And, um, incidentally, uh, Gower won the uh, Donaldson and the Antoinette Perry Awards for choreography of the Broadway musical Lendonier, and they're both very coveted prize awards in the theater. Say, Gower, uh, choreography, we know, has something to do with dancing, but I don't think most of us know exactly what it means. Can you explain a little bit about it? Well, let's see. That's quite, of a lar quite a large order. Um, a, a choreographer has to know almost all phases of show business. He has to know about, first, first of all, dancing, naturally, <laughs> and sets, and costumes, and lighting, and he has to know about music, and he has to fuse all of these things into one unit, which is called a dance, or a dance pattern. Mm -hmm. And while it may seem very simple on screen, or in a nightclub, or when you see it on stage, it's usually the result of many weeks or many months of back-breaking work and planning. Even if it only takes a few seconds to perform. That's uh -huh. it. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Are you going to show us uh, some of this tonight? Would you like to see it? I'd like to see it very much. Well, I'll tell you, we brought a couple of friends of ours with us mm -hmm. who have very nicely consented to come down, and we're going to give you a very rough demonstration, a rough idea of how a choreographer goes about putting a few steps together and making a dance out of it. Oh, that's wonderful, and we're very anxious to meet those friends of yours, but right now, Hal Gibney would like us to meet a friend of his, his Pacific Telephone guest for tonight, and she's Miss Sally Shepard from San Francisco. Here she is with Hal. Thank you, Helen. Well, Sally, I understand that you're a service representative for Pacific Telephone in San Francisco. That's right, Hal. I handle calls from customers when they ask for telephone service. For instance, they'd like a telephone extension installed, I'm the service representative, and I handle that. And that could be you. That certainly could. It certainly is different, though, from being a school teacher, which I almost was. Don't tell us that you are a school teacher, Sally. No, not exactly. But when I started college at the University of California at Berkeley, mm -hmm. I had intentions of being a school teacher, but I decided before I graduated it wasn't quite the field for me. I see. Well, then what did you do? Then I answered an ad in the paper and went to work at Pacific Telephone uh -huh. and got went to classes again and got paid for it this time. <laughs> and I'll bet that you were training in those classes for that job that you filled at Pacific Telephone, weren't you? I certainly was. And you know, Hal, the one thing that certainly impressed me when I started training was the friendliness at Pacific Telephone that still does. I see. Well, I guess you've made a lot of friends at Pacific Telephone, haven't you, Sally? Oh, I certainly have, and the job itself is very interesting. Anything but routine, then? Oh, not at all, and I certainly enjoy working with people, mm -hmm. and the wonderful training you get makes you completely confident before you handle a call from a customer. You know, Sally, uh, you sound like a one-woman committee for the promotion of jobs for Pacific Telephone. <laughs> oh, indeed, that's exactly what I am. I've told all my college friends that Pacific Telephone is a wonderful place to work. Well, a lot of people agree with you, Sally. And it's certainly been nice of you to come all the way down from San Francisco and be here with us tonight. We've enjoyed it, and thank you. Now, here again is Helen Parrish. Thank you, Hal and Sally. You know, in choreography, we all know you have to have an idea first, but you must have a rehearsal hall, and we've sort of improvised one here. <laughs> and, of course, you have to have a pianist. 
That's right, and we've brought our friend and conductor and pianist with us, Richard Prebor. Hello, Helen. I'm very happy to know you. Say, yeah, he's been with you a long time, hasn't he? Oh, yes, he has, for five years. And is he going to be with you when you open this coming Wednesday night at the Coconut Grove at the Ambassador Hotel? Uh You can be sure he is. With bells on, ready to go. And in other words, all three of you will be there for three weeks, won't you? Yeah, we're very excited about it because we're going to be there with Les Baxter's orchestra, which is a wonderful group. And it's going to be a wonderful engagement. Should be a lot of fun. Okay. And now can we see what happens when you really go to work start creating a dance routine? You ready? I'm all set. Well, this is just a very simple idea of how a dance might be put together. Okay. All right. I'd like you to know Roberta Stevenson and Lenny Claret, who are going to do a little demonstration bit here. All right? Now, my partner, Lenny. All right, first step, we start out. We'll do arabesque, cross left. Glissade, round de jambe. All right, Roberta, turn to the left and repeat it across to the left again. And arabesque and cross, glissade, round de jambe. Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on croise the left. Now, double pirouette ending in attitude facing Lenny. Go, grab her. Ah, fine. Now, attitude to the right, swing out, hold her there still. Go back to the Give left. Me Missed me. <laughs> All right, now, a little lift out of that. Let me show you. Right. Fine. Just hang on. I'm just going to swing around this way. Do an attitude again. Go. Oop. And out. One turn. And stop. Fine. Grab again, Lenny. Here we go. Now, third eight bars would be, let's say, balance say, to the right. Step left. Double turn to the outside to the right. Go around and cross to the left. Extension to the right. In front. Double tour to the right outside this time. And then in the lunge. Fine. Now, Lenny, we'll do a unison thing, and I want to go around and back of Roberta on this one. Mm-hmm. You with me? And it'll be one, two, three, one, two, kick. Like that. Now, if you'll hold this position here, you have it by the right arm. Now, Roberta, turn and face Lenny from there around. Take both hands and get a good solid grip. Now get your right foot and your left foot underneath you and let it down in a deep, deep lunge position. Uh-huh. Squeak. All right. <laughs> now remember that lift we tried? Uh-huh. Up. Good. Turn to the right. Easy down. Take your arms off your shoulders. Woo-hoo. And finish. Turn out. Fine. Now, one more thing. From here, do the spiral. Under. And into a lift. Up. Into a sit position across me. <laughs> Hanging on. All right, now take this leg out to the right. In the second. Good. And stop. Like that. Try that, will you, Lenny? With the right hand here. Spiral her right under. Go. Lift right as she hits you. Sit. Swing back. Good. Now just go into a straight waltz. Right around. Do four of them. Let her out, do a deep curtsy, and a bow. Don't go away, I'll stay right there. All right. Well, that very roughly is something like we might put a dance together. Oh, that's very exciting. There's only thing, one thing that bothered me, Gower. Uh, in all the expressions you use, it sounds sort of like a foreign language to me. It is. Oh, French. <laughs> <laughs> all, almost all dance terms are in French. Oh, I see. Well, that explains why it sounded that way. Yes, ballet. Hey, Marge, uh, I know that Gower starts out and starts to create it, and then when do you take over? Well, right about now would be the time when I would say, well, I think maybe they ought to do a little something different here, or what if they tried this? Well, then yeah. you're the editor. That's right. With some very good ideas, believe me. Oh, I see. And you always take her advice? Not always, mm. <laughs> but uh, he has to have a pretty good reason not to. Oh, I see what you mean. What about costuming? Is that your department, too? I help a great deal on that. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we're about ready. You asked for a prop here, uh, Gower, and I well, produced Well, yes. One. Well, that's very pretty. I asked for a picture frame because mm-hmm. Marge and I, in our dances, both for stage and screen and nightclubs, always like to have a little idea or a gimmick or a setting. So we thought it'd be kind of fun if we set this very simple little dance that we just set with the kids and put them into the frame in silhouette, as though there were two dancers in a picture coming to life and dancing. That's what always makes your dancing so wonderful. You always tell a story. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Shall we do it? Yeah. All right. Ready? Here we go.
that very roughly is the way we put a dance together. Thank you. Thank you. Helen Parrish and her guests will be back in just a moment. But I'd like to tell you now about the excellent job opportunities at Pacific Telephone. You know, usually on this program, we tell you about the many opportunities in telephone work for young women. But we also wish to remind you that the Pacific Telephone Company has openings for young men in craft work, leading to such skilled and interesting occupations as line man, installer, cable splicer, central office maintenance man. And you don't have to have experience to qualify for these positions because the telephone company will train you right there on the job. Now, as for your future, well, these are steady, full-time jobs. And as the telephone company is rapidly expanding here in Southern California, there's ample opportunity for advancement. Other advantages include regularly scheduled raises and an exceptionally fine employee benefit plan. Now, most of these jobs are open in Los Angeles and San Diego, but we do have openings in other areas in Southern California. So why don't you drop in and inquire about these job opportunities for men? In Los Angeles, go to 740 South Olive Street. In San Diego, go to 3940 7th Avenue. Drop in tomorrow. That good job that you've been looking for may be waiting right now at Pacific Telephone. And now here again is Helen Perry. Thank you, Hal. And thank you, Sally, for visiting us from San Francisco. We enjoyed having you. And, of course, our very special thanks to Marge and Gower Champion. We're going to be looking forward to your picture, Give a Girl a Break, and we'll also be at your opening at the Coconut Grove on Wednesday night. Thanks Good. so much. Well, it's been such fun being here. We'll look for you. Okay, Darling. I'll be there. And thank you, Dick and Roberta and Lenny, for helping us out. You know, uh, Lenny is vacationing out here from the hit parade. I knew I'd seen you somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and Roberta, you told me, uh, Marge, is a, a dance-in for you at the studio, is that yes, right? Yes, Roberta has always danced in for me on our pictures because we're very much the same size and we work quite a lot alike. Well, isn't that wonderful? That's like a stand-in, only she dances, too. Instead. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, we'll be seeing you Wednesday night at the Coconut Grove, and wonderful. thanks again. Uh, next week, we'll be back with a new series for Pacific Telephone. This is your music, and it's going to be a program of American scenes told in words and music. And our story next week will be The Street of Songs, and our guest will be that wonderful Margaret Whiting. Until then, uh, hoping you'll be with us for This is Your Music, this is Helen Perry saying good night, and meeting you was a good idea. <laughs> Next week at this same time, Pacific Telephone will present This Is Your Music, starring Helen Parrish, with the songs of Keith Carver and Catherine Steele, the music of Paul Nero, and our special guest, Miss Margaret Whiting. Now, this is Hal Gibney with a the reminder, there's a good job for you at Pacific Telephone. <laughs>